Hello. Yeah, welcome to session number 20 in the series Microwave and Millimeter Wave Circuit Design. My name is Anurag Nigam. And last time I have talked to you about a, a model which ADS has provided you, which uh, models the gain compression. But then besides gain compression, it doesn't model anything with the phase. It doesn't model anything with the, the impedance matching right so basically there is no information about impedance in this system right though i'm terminating this into 50 ohm but it could have worked in any impedance right so this is not what a practical circuit looks like right so so this is even the response here of you know the the the, the return loss doesn't vary with power which is not correct okay and then the phase doesn't vary with power which is also not correct right so in realistic system what this single tone would be so let's do that right so let's go to a setup here and let's go to our amplifier right so I have two setups open okay so this setup I'll explain you the setup first okay in this setup <clears throat> I'm going to put in these are your couplers these are your ideal couplers right like for example the circulator right so here what we are having is we are measuring power a1 b1 a2 b2 so if i put a power a1 right and then i get a power a b2 right so then b2 and a1 would give me the gain and then if i look at b1 with respect to a1 that will give me the reflection and similarly if i was to put in power a2 right and i i basically look at uh what is that b2 right if i put power a2 into the 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 circuit and look at b2 what i will have is the return loss output return loss now what what we are going to do okay we are going to do a a large signal on the input and a small signal on the output but then what we are going to do is we are going to slightly offset the frequencies right so i'm going to do a large signal on the input and a small signal on the output so small signal input on the uh, the small signal uh, on the output of the pa and large signal input on the input of the pa right so i'm going to do something called a mixed mode simulation mixed mode harmonic balance simulation so basically you set up the same way right and you're going to do the the, the power sweep and everything right uh, only thing is that you specify the simulation to be to be mixed mode so you are going to do a small signal as well right and then you also specify a small signal frequency right so it will be a frequency put at a certain offset right so so that's what you are going to provide here small signal frequency right so now let's say my input is rf frequency then here i can put in a frequency right isn't it uh, ss frequency is one kilohertz now i will put here a small signal uh, frequency all right so this is a ss mixer mode yes but then this ss frequency i will put my frequency which is 5.9 gigahertz at a certain offset right it's because i want to see the response of the pa uh, output output impedance how it moves right so here i think i am going to do uh, 5.9 gigahertz right so let's put a mid band okay so i'm going to sweep this anyways right so rf frequency is in gigahertz right and here sorry so rf frequency is in gigahertz and here i'm sweeping rf frequency right that's fine and uh, so basically i can put here rf frequency okay plus a certain offset let's say i put here uh, a 10 megahertz offset right 10 right so that would show up 
here, right? RF frequency plus 10 megahertz, right? Okay. And that frequency will be used for small signal analysis, right? Okay. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is, let's see if this works. Okay. I am going to take my matched, small signal matched PA okay which is or rather a gain stage and i'll throw out everything other than the pa so even this one i can say edit copy and i would say edit paste so i'll put it on the top level the include file so i can get rid of the include file and i will get rid of the options also and this one and this thing i'll put on the top level the supply right and even this one this one this one this one control x and control v so i am going to put it on the top level even this one control x and control v okay so this is my current ideas and this is my voltage right and then i am going to make get rid of this port and this port right and I am going to add pins to this right so I want to make a symbol for this so this is going to be my P in and then let me rotate this okay so this is going to be my P out right and so so this is going to be P in Right, so this is called P in, and this is called P out. Correct, and then you have VG. So this will be called VG. Or VGS or whatever, I'll call this as VG. Okay, so this will be called VG, illegal component, okay, so better change it over here, VG, okay, and then I will have VD, so this will be called VD, VD and VG, so we have this. Now what I want to do is I want to make a symbol for this. So I can say edit component push into hierarchy or I can make a symbol over there also. So create hierarchy design name is dot matching DRV. Okay uh okay so what it means is edit component push into hierarchy should be there component hierarchy because this is an older version i'm trying to figure out how do you make a symbol for this so i'll put you in a pause for a second okay so now I have figured out how to make a symbol. So this is an older version of ADS, but doesn't matter. So I am going to just make it look like a, so I am going to rotate this. Uh, this is VD and this is VG. And then I have P in and P out, correct? Okay and i am going to make a symbol for this okay so it allows only 45 degrees i didn't know this okay you can go to preferences and you can say that you want to allow other angles where is it any angle okay 
So when you do that, let me see if it allows me any angle. Yes. Okay. So this one I can make thick or medium. Okay. So I'm going to put here VG. And I'm going to put here VD. Right. So this is my symbol for that circuit which I have created. Save it. Close it. Now I'm going to pull that thing in here. Okay. So if I pull that thing over here, I have this PA or whatever the game stage and I have just connected it over here. I'll name this node as Vout. So this node I am going to name as Vout. Correct. And once I have done that, I'll just attach the the current source, the, the, the supply here, DC supply. Right. So that's your VD. And that's your VG. Right. And these values are over here. So I have connected this. Okay. So I have connected this. And I don't have to specify this here. I'm not sure unless it complains. I don't have to specify this over here. This is a 10 megahertz offset on that frequency. Okay. For a small signal. So anyways. So we are ready for simulation which is a mixed mode harmonic balance where the output, the, the input is going to be a large signal and the output I'm going to force in small signal. And if I hit simulate, unless it comes up with the error, so it did come up with the error. Hang on a second. So let me check the error. Uh, okay. So what has happened here? Uh, this is a common error. That's okay. And then it says the component is invalid. Simulator is a frequency higher than the range of the model. And extrapolated. Why would that be? So this is 5.95 gigahertz. Yeah. Let me put you on a pause for a second. Let me figure this out. Okay. So what happened was I'll tell you. Okay. So here, this is an offset frequency I set to 10 kilohertz, right? So this is a small signal frequency which I'm going to put into the output of the PA to see how much the the, the impedance moves, and the, the the frequency is going to be swapped from uh, five nine. Uh, 5950 megahertz to 750 megahertz uh, megahertz and with a step of uh, 600 megahertz so this is a 12 megahertz uh, wi-fi 6e band and uh, this power is being swapped from uh, minus 10 to plus 5 right now this uh, if you remember the question current for this pa was 24 milliamps and uh, usually in a p-hamp, uh, when you RF bias it, the current goes up, and the current goes up not by more than two and a half, right? So 25 into two, it will be 50, and then 62.5 would be the current maximum drawn. So if you take 62.5, multiply by 3.5, right? So you will be putting out something like 220 or 230 milliwatt. Uh, you will be consuming that much of power and the efficiency is let's say 30 percent or 40 percent then you will be putting out something like uh, uh, something like uh, half of that right so 240 half is 120 milliwatts or 128 milliwatts so it should be compressing the pa should be compressing around 21 or 20 dpm right so the gain is 10 right so 21 uh, minus 10 right 21 minus 10 would be 11 so basically you have to sweep up to up to let's say 11 to see the compression and uh, what i'll do is yeah to see the compression of the pa okay so now in this mixed mode simulation i'm doing this simulation here and i'm going to show you what is going what is happening okay so what is happening is that the gain varies from 
10.8 to 9.5 but then the gain you see a expansion here right you see this gain expansion and then you can look at the 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 last signal k and the k is dipping below 1 right so that means that this pa is going to be unstable so to stabilize the pa there are a few things which you can do and then you can redo the matching right so what you can do is you can put here a little bit of more inductance into it right and then you will adjust your layout to ac accommodate that inductance so let's say i put 40 pico henry more okay 40 pico henry more right and now i go up and simulate this again so first thing is i'm looking at large signal stability so now it is better than it is better than one right so it is stable but what has happened to the match so this is basically a cross frequency a cross power match and this is output match right so what i'm going to do here is i am going to adjust this match right adjust this match so so this is how much this is not yet compressing right so so let's see if i can get down by 20 pico energy so i have the minimum impact on the the gain okay so it's still better than that so let's try to compress this device so let's put in more power okay let's put in here up to 14 0.1 okay so i'm compressing this trying to compress the device here okay so now this is what is happening the k dips as the device compresses okay and i want to compress it at least by 1 db so even i have to go bigger than that right so so basically i have to go up to seven and a half okay so let's put in more power into it 14 let's put in more 3 db more 17 wait i don't like this point one okay let's see if it compresses now okay so it does so i have got the 1 db compression point and look at how what k is doing here right under last signal right so i have eight and a half db on one side and then the other side i have got nine and a half so one db variation across band is there right and the compression characteristics right okay so this is of course there is this bump right so now what you have to do is let's go even further lower in in this let's see what happens at minus 20 or minus 30. so this is typical of a p hamped this typical curve the gain kink what you see here is a typical of a p hamped okay so not much so basically you are seeing this non-linearity anyways okay so what i wanted to show you is the following okay your small signal matches over here okay so i can overlay so if i did a small signal simulation under here s21 oh what happened over there is it a wrong representation oh not s21 sorry s22 i have to look at so go to matching small signal matching and look at s22 okay so now you will see that you were matched like this okay so these points of course the match moved because i did the decoupling right i did the the source degeneration right i can adjust this match back right okay so so this points these points what you see here 
which are along here okay this is slightly detuned right i can i can put the same inductance over there so so let me see now i don't have that schematic is it so i'll create a new schematic this is called matching so i'll create a new schematic and what i'm trying to show here is what happens under power so i'm going to say new schematic and yeah here new schematic and i'm going to take the whole thing here which is this plus this and this and control c and then i am going to do this control v here and all i have to do is a small signal right so i want to know the small signal of this one so i'll just save this and save this as ss match okay so i'm just trying to show you what's happening in the real circuit and then you will understand why load pull is not required right so i'm trying to make a point here that really the load pull is not required so what you do here is you put here the terminal here and terminal here right so now looking at this you do this okay so this is a this is a small signal right so i will do a s parameter simulation Okay, and the S parameter simulation will go from uh, 5.95 gigahertz to uh, 7.15 gigahertz, right? In steps of let's say 0. Point, uh, 0.01 gigahertz, correct? And say okay. So I am going to simulate this one. Okay, so this simulation will give me S22 and s11 right so they are like this right so now what i want to do is overlay these on the last signal okay so i'm going to overlay these on the last signal hang on a second okay so this is a small signal this is a large signal so i'm going to throw this one off so this is coming from SS match, right? So I will go to SS match, SS match, okay? And I'll plot S22. So now you see here, this one is your small signal match. And these ones are across power. So you see what happened was when you matched it and the small signal, it was like this. But when it went into compression, you were over here do you understand my point my point is that when you started small signal you were on these corners okay three, three these are three frequencies right and then this is across power so under small signal the matching was like this and then under large signal you were over here you were mismatched more so the idea is to move the entire thing up so that these points are going to align over here so that the compression would make more sense and for that what do you have to do in the output there is an inductor right so that inductor has to be reduced so that this moves up right so this small signal will move further up and a small signal will be mismatched right so i'm not going to i'm going to sacrifice the match at a small signal because the pa is not going to be used at a small signal right it's going to be used at a large signal so so really what i require is my compression should be good so i have to move these points up to the center so let me see if i'm recording this point yeah i am okay similarly on the input side if you see here you take ss match and you put here s11 okay so s11 was again like this right okay so basically you are matched on these tips right so this is your small signal match and the red ones are across power across frequency so really under compression you were slightly mismatched right or rather you were matched better or whatever you say but you see that the the small signal match is not going to move because the power is still small signal but the last signal match is going to move because you know because then uh, the output you are looking at 
you know the different currents right so this was small signal was at a different current and large signal is at a different current so let's plot the current also so that you are sure what you are looking at okay so i am going to plot the current uh, there it is and i want to plot the dc value of this right so for three frequencies okay the currents started at the same 24 milliamps right so this is your marker new so this is your bias current which is 22 milliamps and when you hit it with power the the currents will go up right so the currents have gone up for the three different frequencies here right okay so this is under power your currents have gone up and your mesh would naturally move because the currents have gone up so you were matched small signal at 22 milliamps but under last signal you are mismatched and you have to move this match back okay so that is called last signal tune and in in the input side nothing will happen because input uh, the, the power levels are 10 db lower so the input match doesn't move much right so if you look at these equations when i establish s11 i'm looking at last signal hb data when I'm looking at S22, I'm looking at small signal data, SM, right? When I'm looking at S21, I'm looking at large signal data. S12, I'm looking at a small signal data. So this is a mixed mode simulation. And then using the, the, the equation for K, I am computing the, the value of K. And this K would be under, under large signal right so this is a stability k under large signal it has to be better than one so you are seeing k across power and across frequency right and you have to maintain it better than one whatever frequency you operate up to now if you keep compressing this naturally this will turn back again and it will go lesser than one so all pms are going to oscillate when you compress them a lot so that's what's going to happen right so so what did we do first? Okay, so let's summarize. What did I do? I, I linearize this for last signal. So my K, under small signal, I never had a problem of K because I, I looked at the load and store stability circle while designing it. But then under last signal, when you hit it with power, the currents change. And when the currents change, you have to stabilize at those currents. And for that, I inserted a 20 pico Henry here, right? Rest of the circuit is, is the same small signal right now after doing this simulation which is a hybrid simulation or mixed mode simulation i came across this result okay and this result basically is saying that i'm compressing by 1 db somewhere so i'll put in here this so let's say this is eight and a half so let's look at seven and a half So don't worry about this kink. I'll explain what that is. So I'm looking at seven and a half. So here it's seven and a half. So at 16, at 16, I add seven and a half to it. So 16.1 plus seven, right? That will be equal to 23.5. So I'm delivering 23.5 dBm at 7.15 gigahertz and then i have 16.1 and 8.6 okay so over here i am delivering 16 plus 8 is 24.6 so at 5.95 i'm delivering 24.6 dbm out and at at 7.15 i'm delivering 23 and a half right my let's say my target is 24 right so i'm slightly off okay now let's see can i improve the compression and how do i improve the compression i will match it better under compression so i'll move this point to the center to to do that what do i have to do i would have to change this right the, so this inductor has to reduce so i'm not going to put a tune on it let's go small step at a time so let's make this as 69 69 will move that up okay so if i simulate this now so 
so what happened let me see did it move up yeah it moved slightly up because the small signal moved up i have to move up further a lot actually so i'm going to go here and go down to 62 so and come up and simulate again by the way you can put a tune on this but i am going to because it's going to take time right so that's why i'm not doing a tune you have to sit for a long time for cursor to move okay so now it is moving up you see the entire match is moving up you are mismatching at the 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 smaller uh, power but then you are matching better at the higher power so let's see this is s22 match right so this is across frequency but then uh, across power i would want to plot this right uh, so i think it is done through permute right okay let's see if i can take s22 is uh, is over here where's the equations s22 add and this is what let's say db what does it plot against it plots against power right so these are the three frequencies at small signal i'm detuned at this frequency but i'm trying to match better at this so i want to make these last points better than 10 db okay so i'm matching mismatching on the the small signal side but i'm trying to match on the last signal side so let's do that okay so this is going to be let's say five let's say the least value is five okay simulate okay so now you see all the three points are below 10 db okay so at this point what has happened is that this has aligned over here like this okay and the input match has also moved so if you want you can adjust that right so what has happened is over here that the compression is now going to be extended out okay the gain has gone down under small signal right so what i can do is i can slightly bias this up so let's say this is 5848 and say simulate okay so this is better and the key is better than this and let's look at the return loss across power this is five which is really bad right and can i do anything about that answer is no okay i can compromise i can compromise slightly right so basically i can compromise on on the output match and that means that i can put somewhere like 0.56 or something okay and hit simulate again and what i'm trying to show you is what load pull does is the blind thing which which i'm doing right now manually okay so now this is better and let's see how bad is this this is around seven or six seven right and this is better than nine so i can still sacrifice a little bit more but then what has happened to compression is uh, yeah i have an advantage over compression this is 8.6 and i have to look at 7.6 7.6 over here so now i have 6. 16.6 plus 7.6 so 16 plus 7 is going to be 23 so this is delivering 24 out so now i have gained half a db by adjusting my match 
my large signal match has now moved up okay so my small signal has degraded but then the last signal has improved now one more thing is this capacitor can be increased so that this entire system moves to the right okay so this capacitors can be decreased so this capacitor can be decreased to let's say 2.5 Okay, so let's see what's going to happen. So now what you are seeing is that you are not doing a load pull as most of the PA guys are used to. And that's a blind number crunching. Right. So now. Okay, so now let's look at the match. So this is better than 10 which means that I can bring this down again. Okay, and what has happened to the gain over here? 8.5, right, 7.5. So I still have gained some more numbers. So let's do this. Let's push it to the right. Okay, so let's keep pushing it to the right. Okay, so to push it to the right, so I'm showing you how to do a large signal tune. Okay, which PA guys really avoid. They just run into load pull and I'm I hate load pull because it is just a way of making money okay okay so now we have moved the way this way and we can move down now right we can really move down we have moved a lot on the right so what has happened to my return losses uh, much worse right so there is a compromise just between the two so let's see keep it at 2.3 and let's keep that as 5.9 simulate it not this one okay so now you see these are matched like this and this one of course you can also do a broadband match here right but let's see what is the sacrifice here so it is better than six on the small signal so i can basically sacrifice this more so the small i'm trying to get the both the both uh, small signal and large signal to be good right so six four trying to get both of them to be good and see hit simulate not this one okay so this is better right and the way it is aligned is like this and that is a small signal correct and the next thing to notice is this excursion is really what is important and that excursion is really a factor of how do you bias this okay now if this is not drawing any current i could have put a resistor here and this resistor will change the excursion here this excursion which you see here it will change that right i can still push it to the right if i want right but i don't want to do that so basically why because you can if you if you get to do this you can do it your own right so a small signal input match is good input match is better than input match is going to be better than so let's make this as an input match huh? oh. trace options input match okay so the input match is better than 10 okay the output match is for small signal is the worst case is over here 
is 6.6 and then it goes under compression so this can further be improved slightly right so i'm trying to get the best of the both the words right so here let's look at what is happening to the compression okay so we have 8.7 here and 7.7 .7 here so 16.6 here 16.6 plus 7.7 .7. so 16 plus 7 is 23.6 plus 7 okay so we are 24 point some dbm out so the worst case we are putting out 24 dbm okay so i have gained the compression here i have, I have improved the compression here by adjusting this match right and let me just do one more iteration which i will put this as 6.8 and this is the last iteration i would do you can play with a pa as long as you like and pa would you would never be satisfied with your own results okay so now i have sacrificed that and now i am 7.5 and they are kind of lined up under compression in this and let's see what it does over here i am at 8.7 and 7.6 okay 7.7 .7. so 16.5 plus 7.7 .7 would be 24.3 so worst case i am delivering 24.3 dbm out or 250 milliwatts right more than 250 milliwatts i'm delivering and this is my output match and this is my input match the small signal and the large signal this is again the the large signal is over here and the small signal is over there now you can take this and run the s parameter again so as to adjust the other one right so let's go to which one is this this one let's run this again okay so this is adjusted here and in our display it would be adjusted so so now you can see okay the small signal matches over here while the last signal matches over here right and both are come are basically well placed right and what are you doing in the load pool you are doing the same stuff but you are doing it blindly right so the 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 moral of the story here is is if you can see the things you don't need the load pool and you can create the same setup in in the lab also so you don't need a very costly load pull stands right and then you know ads always you know key side guys always come up with load pull stuff and load pull has become a big issue there are big lectures on load pull what for i don't understand what for right i would also show you load pull but that would be blind so this will make more sense okay so i'm going to stop here so i explained to you how do i adjust the compression through a large signal match and how do i look at the large signal stability right so i'm going to stop here thanks a lot thank you